Hey guys, your boy here, Eric Coffey, coming to you live from Miami, Florida, bringing you the all new GovCon Giants podcast where we interview SBA award winners, decision makers, government contractors. We're taking a look at policy makers, that people who are driving the engine, the ship behind this all GovCon world that we want to embark on and be a part of. So make sure when you get a chance, take a look at the all new GovCon Giants podcast, wherever you get your podcast, listening to Stitcher, Apple iTunes, Spotify, we're everywhere, Google Play, make sure to check us out. For today's video, what we are discussing is PSC codes. You might have heard of these codes. You, we all know or are familiar with the NAICS code, right? So the N-A-I-C-S, NAICS code, North American Industry Classification System, right? But what we don't know a lot about or what we don't hear is PSC codes or product service codes. In today's video, we're going to touch on what PSC codes are, what they're used for, and also how to use them to start doing some research. This is actually going to be more the first part of a multi-part series on PSC codes. So stay tuned and look forward to future episodes. All right, I'll see you when you finish. Earlier today, I was actually reviewing this uh, website, GovCon channel, written by Guy Timberlake of the ASBC.org. If you're not familiar with Guy Timberlake, he's got a lot of great content. He's been discussing the government marketplace and how to help small businesses low-hanging fruit contracts, simplified acquisition. He discusses all that on his blog and more stuff. So if you can, if you get a chance, check out his blog, uh, thegovconchannel.com. I will have references to his particular uh, article in this show notes. But for now, what we want to discuss today is the importance of a PSC code. And he right here talks about the differences between a PSC code and a NAX code. I know a lot of you out there have, uh, well, maybe not a lot of you, but I know that there's been several people who've reached out to me uh, discussing the, um, the importance of a PSC code and what it's used for. And in this particular article, what he says is that the PSC code versus the NAX code, the NAX code in that the PSC code describes what was bought for the contract action and the NAX codes describe how the purchase products and services will be used. Um, it's a little bit tricky. But here, I think, is a better example over here in this page where he gives an actual uh, opportunity of the landscape for an accounting business. And in this particular example, what he says is if your company does accounting services, then you would typically pick for these four NAX codes. Um, however, if you look at this, this particular PSC code for support management accounting, then what you'll notice is under that PSC code, when you go out and you look under uh, FPDS, right, you will notice that they actually use different NAX codes that are not necessarily tied directly to accounting. So in essence, what he's saying here is if you only uh, did a search for your respective NAX codes and you did not search within this uh, defined PSC code, then you're missing out on opportunities that exist. And that's basically the gist that I got from the article. Now, fast forward, uh, how do you determine the PSC codes for your business? Um, Guy was helpful enough to put in here a link to this handy dandy tool that the US government uses to determine the PSC uh, codes that the respective contracting officials are using. And then when I saw it, I thought, well, this is great. We can just reverse engineer this tool and allow us to determine what PSC codes we should be putting and our SAM application, and also our uh, SBA Dynamic Small Business Search tool as well. Now, looking here, if you've got a product or service, this is pretty straightforward, I like it. Let's say you're in clothing, okay? And then it tells you, basically, under clothing, they've got medical and dental, substance, textiles, clothing, and equipage. And from here, if you choose medical and dental, you'll see all of the respective PSC codes that correspond to that area. And I, and I just thought that this was just the neatest thing that I had to share it with you guys. Let's do another example. Again, this is, I mean, this is pretty like basic uh, in terms of the way it's laid out. It's really user friendly and really, and really functional, I think. Um, let's go over to, for example, let's say um, we're going to do a construction. I know I like construction. I'm in construction. What do you expect? The uh, respective PAC codes. And by the way, let, let me just talk about what 
uh, guys mentions in his article. He says that all of the respective PSC codes are broken down into three categories, R&D, services, and products. And that's why you see them broken down in this manner. Now, if you are in construction, and let's say you do restoration activities, then you would fall under this particular PSC code. If you did some development facilities, then look, I mean, it breaks it down all the way to the specific job, right? Dams, canals, construction of mines. Let's go back down here. Uh, construction of pollution abatement control facilities, EPG facilities. You know, and I think that, and let's go into structure. I, I think that this is a really neat tool that any one of us can use and apply it to our business to, to find out which respective PSC codes fit not only um, that fit the, the the task that we do specifically to the organization. And again, like in the accounting example, it's really easy to see. I'm trying to get back out of here. It's really easy to see how someone could miss out on particular contract opportunities by only looking at the NAX code, be, whereas the government might have used the, the given PSC code in the search for a company to work with or in doing their um, their research for their market research activities and they didn't use the respective NAX code. And that would basically eliminate a lot of us out here who, again, we're, we're tracking our whole, all the projects based on NAX and just eliminating PAC code. And that's the, the gist of the article. But I thought today I wanted to touch on, and I'm looking for some other, some additional examples. I just thought today I would just touch on how you could, in a very easy manner, um, start adding PSC codes to your particular services. Now, here we go. Transportation services. Transportation of people. And I actually have someone that has that sent me information about that. When I looked up their next, I didn't find much stuff. But if I would have bet if I looked up transportation of people, the PAC code, I would find a lot more opportunities. I think that for a lot of you out here who have done research and you found that your research has been limited, I can, I can see how this is going to be able to expand the uh, the reach and the amount of potential opportunities that exist in doing your research. I know for a lot of computer-based companies, um, this is the case because, again, I've seen where you've had NAX codes that include various services. So, for example, uh, one that comes to mind is dental sensors. I know a friend of mine was helping uh, a company that provided dental sensors look up their, uh, do their research based on only the NAX code alone. And when you did the search based on NAX code, what we're finding is that NAX code included other things other than dental sensors. So I believe that this particular, using the PSC code would be instrumental in helping them narrow that search to just this very specific uh, product that they were looking for. And again, when you're in FPDS and you're doing searches, You'll see on all the searches, they've got PSC codes listed, right? And all the searches, they've got PSC codes. So if you've ever wondered, why is it that I'm looking at the same NAX code, but I've got different PSC codes, now maybe this particular video will give you some insight and guide as to why that is the case. Listen, again, I hope this video helps some of you guys out here. Let me know if this works for you, if this makes any sense. Let me know if you tried it, if you were able to uh, find some additional research, some additional information that maybe that you didn't have before prior to watching this video. Give me your feedback in the show notes page below and we'll see you next time. Hey, how did you enjoy that video on the PSC codes? Like I said, this is going to be the first part of a multi-part series on PSC codes. Also, also, also very important. We are eliminating the free course. No more free course. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video. We're going to be moving that free course over to the Udemy platform where we can actually get people to start doing some of the activities and achieving some of the results. And like I said, we'll discuss that in some of the upcoming episodes. So if you have not already registered for the Win How to Win Government Contracts for Dummies free course as of now, you are running out of time. It'll probably be in the next 30 to 45 days where it is gone. No more free course. We'll be putting together a webinar. And of course, we also, we still will continue doing our GovCon Giants paid course for members who want to advance their journey and actually take a deep dive into this, get their feet wet. So 
Again, if you have not already, make sure you sign up on our email list for all this and more information. Also, to tips, tricks, tools, ticks, tactics, how you can advance your journey. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.